In the course of my study of Sister Brown's diary and my research about the past and history of the orphanage, terrible events started to become very obvious. Elizabeth Brown's notes document the increasingly disturbing development within the orphanage, but also in the surrounding villages since Father John was put in charge of the orphanage. She described the progressive abandonment, a conversion from Christian values and principles of faith to a community that not only rejected any form of occidental religiosity, but sought to replace it with atheistic values, strongly oriented towards social Darwinism. Miss Brown described ritual acts and ceremonies which resemble practices performed by satanic cults. She reported about initiation rites and the invocation of dark powers. She mentioned systematic use of physical and psychological abuse of the children in order to make them submissive and compliant. Elizabeth Brown witnessed unspeakable cruelties and, as a devout Christian, had to watch the community around her turn further and further away from God. Symbols appeared repeatedly in her records, one of which I also noticed several times during my research, the Leviathan Cross, the alchemical symbol for black sulfur, also called the Satanic Cross by many. I decided to consult an expert in the field of cult research. All right, all right, all right, welcome back to orphans now you heard it just now yourself that sister brown documented that how you know it, it felt like father john was starting to use different types of religious or i i guess you could say non-religious teachings to the community and and kind of like what she said the, like the atheist um teachings to the community which started to i guess push the community farther away from their Christianity and into this cult, satanic type of ideology, I guess. They, they started using the Leviathan cross, which a lot of people, you know, they, they were relating that to the satanic cross. So a lot of these things that Sister Brown was picking up on, and none of it sounds good. And, and they were torturing the kids... Uh, essentially torturing them to, and, and, and making them, you know, follow them, you know, by torturing them and making them submissive because of the pain and suffering that they were causing to them. And he started turning the entire community. So you're, you're talking like the sheriff of the town, you know, all the politicians of the, any, any high ranking person of the community, you start turning them and it's, and it, it's just like a, it's just like a, a virus. It starts affecting everyone. And it seems like this entire community got affected. Now, we wonder how many of those people are still affected. The sheriff that Ina and Samuel with are right now, are they part of this cult? We don't know for sure, but I have a hunch that he just might be. We don't know. We do have some notes, though. Let's go ahead and check out these notes, these new notes that we have. We have Gruber got in touch. Mika is trapped and in the village. Now, a lot of this took place in the last video, but it's great to kind of touch up on. So Gruber finally got in touch. This guy called Gruber got in touch. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be much of help. He used to work with Mr. Fonz, but couldn't give us any clues as to his whereabouts. He thinks the events of the orphanage are some kind of group hysteria and doesn't believe in a haunting or a curse. Goober doesn't doesn't trust anything that we're saying. He doesn't believe in anything that we're saying. He thinks it's some type of hysteria. He's he's not a believer in it in, in, in any way, shape, or form. Kind of like what the notes said, he's not much help. Mika is trapped. Mika is trapped inside that I don't know what it is. It's some some room. It almost kind of looked like a shower. A shower room, but I'm not sure. Mika is stuck. While looking for Tammy, Mika accidentally got trapped in a room and can't get a, uh, can't get the door open. I just hope the police get there soon. Samuel and Eno are with the police, and uh, supposedly they're on their way to the village. In the village, Ina and Samuel arrived in the village. They found a hotel and informed the local police officer. He sent a few men from the village to the orphanage. They will get the others out of there. We hope so. We hope so. We have Mika that reached out to us. Says, are you there? 
Yeah, we're here. I, I thought the police were informed. Well, they were, but maybe they're having a hard time finding the orphanage the same way Ina and Samuel did. Where the hell are they? Probably lost or dead. Who knows? Or or everything. They're 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 there, but they're not there. They're just driving back and forth, missing it every single time. They're on their way, Mika. Samuel and Ina are with an officer. Be patient, Mika. They'll be there soon. You're right. They should have been. Look, they they definitely should have been there by now. But look, Mika and Samuel, they're with an officer. They're they're on their way. Hopefully. <laughs> Good. I just want to get away from this place. I'm lucky I can at least text with you, tongue tied. If I were alone, I'd lose it too. I still can't understand what's going on. Mika seems to be one of the few, other than C uh, Samuel and Ina, that hasn't been losing her mind. And she's in the orphanage. You think, I mean, everybody's losing their mind in the orphanage except for Mika? Sus. It's super sus. I hope this horror will end soon. None of us can, Mika. I wouldn't want to trade places with you definitely look I, I could i could trade places with Mika. i wouldn't be scared I'm the damn bravest youtuber ever <laughs> look none of us can believe what's going on for sure do you think we could talk about something else tongue-tied i can use some distraction of course what would you like to talk about are you thinking of anything in particular? What would you like to talk? Look, of course. Of course we could we could talk about something else. Get your mind off of being trapped in the dark in the orphanage by Tammy, who's possessed. Tell me something about yourself. I don't know anything about you yet. What's your zodiac sign? My zodiac is. Can we just type in any zod like what if we didn't have a, like, what if we typed in our own Zodiac? Like, <laughs> I wonder if it's possible to type in our own, like, like, what if I said I was a, I don't know, YouTuber. Will she, will, will they pick up that it's an actual Zodiac or not? Got it. Spelling is <laughs> my strong point according to my horoscope either next question so <laughs> you can really just put in anything i suppose interesting I, I i was just curious i thought maybe maybe she would say something like it doesn't sound like are you sure that's the zodiac like are you sure you didn't spell that wrong like but it, it seems like if it's spelled wrong or if it's not even close like <laughs> youtuber is definitely not a zodiac sign but if it's not even close to a zodiac sign it's like i got it Spelling isn't my strongest point, according to my horoscope either. Next question. Are you more of a dog or a cat person? I love dogs. I've got one of my own. <laughs> so I do love dogs. And of course, Mika loves dogs as well. She's got Baloo. Really? It's obvious in my case. I have Baloo. Yeah, right. Of course. Oh, look at the puppy. Look at that. Oh my goodness. The merry eyeballs. So cute. Maybe I can meet him one day. I would love to meet below. That was a premium chat option. In case you missed it. Who knows? I'd really like you to meet or I'd really like to meet you once this is over. Baloo will love you. We better keep going. Are you more of a couch potato? Or busy bee. Look, I'm. I love sitting on the couch and watching a, you know, scary movie or a classic horror movie as much as the next person. But I'm pretty busy. I'm pretty busy. I'm, I'm I'm constantly moving. I'm always always working. Always doing something. I don't I don't tend to sit around too often or too much. So I'm definitely up and moving around. But I do, you know, I love sports. I do enjoy sports. I'm very good at the sports, except for tennis. I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not great at tennis. Yes, me too. I love mountain biking and running. That gives Blue more time outside too. All right, let's carry on. Beach or mountains? Mountains, hundred percent mountains. <laughs> Look, I, I. You already know I don't like to sit around. 
let alone sit around and bake under a hot sun. Like, that's just not my thing. It's not fun for me. It's not relaxing for me. The sun gives me a headache. I don't like it. I'd, I'd rather be up, moving around, hiking in the mountains or something. <laughs> in the wilderness, in the trees, on the mountains, just, just out there in nature. Love it. Absolutely love it. Mountains for sure. Same here. Look, me, me and Mika, we are one and the same. I used to ski a lot. Ski, uh, ski passes have gotten so expensive, though. Plus, it's not very sustainable. Can I ask more, or have had you have you had enough? Look, all, all good. Go ahead. Premium chat option. We're asking more questions. I love skiing as well. I love skiing, snowboard. I, I typically snowboard, but this past year I went skiing. Uh, it was like the first time I've ever really truly skied. Normally, I always go snowboarding. But this time I was using the French fries and, and the pizza. The pizza and the French fries. That, that, that's what I was doing on the on the snow this year. Thanks. That's nice of you. Um camping. Oh, camping for sure. Look, look you already know that I'm I'm <laughs> I love nature. I love the trees. I love the woods. I love I just love nature. So I of course I, I love camping. I kind of find hotels too impersonal. With a tent, you're independent and can simply choose where to spend the night. The night, And I love camping food, too. And falling asleep under the stars after dinner. It all sounds amazing. Making a hamburger or hot dog open o over, over an open fire. Like, can't beat it. Can't beat it. I think I'm running out of questions. Oh no, hang on. I have one more. Book or TV? <laughs> and this is where I I probably go against Mika. I'm definitely definitely more TV than I am book. <laughs> It's been a while since I've read an actual book. I do a lot of reading in games, so I, I, I do that. You know, I, I can say I do a lot of reading in games, do a lot of story-based games, stuff like that. So I do a lot of reading in games. But to sit there on the couch with a paperback or a hardback in my hands, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> reading is very exhausting for me. After a few pages, I'm knocked out. I fall out. I'm, I'm deep sleep. Can't wake me up till the morning. I felt the same way for a long time, but there's only trash on TV nowadays and the ads. Thank God for Netflix. I don't. Well, so I say TV, but I don't have cable. I just have like the streaming services as well: Netflix, Hulu, the typical stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't. I don't have cable. I don't watch cable. Let's turn the tables. Your turn. All right. Summer or winter, festival or theme park, chocolate or chips, loud or quiet. Interesting. Festival, I think festival or theme park would be a good question. For me, it's festival, 100%. I do like theme parks, though. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy theme parks, but I like festivals. Festivals are not my cup of tea. Theme parks are fun, although roller coasters make me feel sick. It makes my friends laugh, though. Movement detected off its wing. Is that Charlie? That's Charlie! <gasps> that was Charlie! Our best friend! It was... <laughs> <laughs> it, was her, it was her best friend Charlie what are you doing in the orphanage Charlie <laughs> I can't believe that it was Charlie was that the other was that was Charlie from the healing what is he doing here what the hell are you doing Charlie it's another premium chat option are we getting ready to go into the authors again Mika's offline the authors yes let's go another author's chat in episode two, Carson says, oh, tongue-tied, you didn't really just mention the healing, did you? Now, Tim and Daniel 
will turn up in a moment. They have a radar for situations like that. Look, it's not my fault you put my best friend in, in the orphanage. It's not my fault. You put Charlie in there. Of course. I My my profile picture is Charlie. Of, of all profile pictures, it's Charlie. My profile picture is Charlie. Of course I'm going to see Charlie from the, from the healing. But I do love the fact that there's another orphan's chat. That's pretty great. Tim, let's go, Tim. Why do you put Charlie in the or orphans? Well, well, well. Look who it is. So the healing is no longer good enough for you, is it? <laughs> so now you also have to give funny answers in orphans as well, all right? I see how it is. Okay. <sighs> okay, I'll, I'll take a look at the whole thing and I'll talk to you later, okay? Just hang in there for a second. <laughs> you're gonna put charlie in orphans i'm gonna make a reference to the healing plain and simple i don't understand a word you're saying i've never played the healing it was me the that already explained that in the healing omg fourth wall look i did explain that in healing and and, and it was uh when we were in the healing wasn't it the sign that we referenced to I always take every answer that has a star. That is true. That is true. Premium chat answers. Every time that there's a star, I take it. Is this a deja vu? We've had the exact same conversation in the healing. Right. It's exactly what Tongue Tide said there, too. <laughs> so, we're in a time warp. Should I just copy the chat from the healing and paste it in here? It would save time. Come on, you have to put some effort into it. Yeah, you have look, you have nothing new. You have do you have anything new, kissy face? Something new? Yeah. Yeah, I want to see something new. Um We'll have to think of something. Daniel? Oh. Have you had a proper look around in Orphans yet? We have a lot of new features. Really? Yeah, I did. I did look around Orphans quite a bit. Saw a lot of new features. For example, the reply function. Would love to try. Do D. <laughs> we do definitely have the reply function. doodle dee doo You don't know that feature? I love it too. Look, I, I love it too. I, I enjoy the, the reply feature. That way we know which character is talking and responding to which comment and response. Good point, Tim. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> okay, we, we didn't know that Tim was going to be talking to himself this whole time. Of course Tim would. Of course Tim would... Would, would, would talk to himself, give him the opportunity, he would, I just realized that the background of Scream has a mouse hanging out of his mouth, <sighs> can't believe he's got a mouse hanging out of his mouth, <sighs> oh man, I'm never gonna be able to look away now, <laughs> I never even saw that mouse before, now I can't stop staring at it. All jokes aside, why is Charlie in the orphanage? Because J.K. Knight's around. J.K. Knight was outside. He was the hooded figure outside Samuel and Ina's car. J.K. Knight must be looking for Charlie. I'll see if he's still in the healing. You don't think? Oh, how is that possible? He's not in the healing. He's not. He's just not there. He's missing. He's, he's not there. This is what all the pictures of him look like in the healing. He must have jumped ship. It kind of makes sense. How, how does that make sense? I mean, J.K. Knight is still in the healing. Unless J.K. Knight jumped ship and went to the orphanage too. But how, how does that make sense? 
The paranormal energies from orphans must have attracted him. Calm down, will you? It's just a game. <laughs> it's not just a game, Karsten. Strange things also happen in the healing. Better keep an eye on Charlie and the situation. And get back to me if you see him again, tongue-tied. You know I will. You know I will. If I see him again, I'll definitely let you know, Tim. Can't believe Charlie is in, in orphans. If Charlie is in orphans, that means J.K. Knight is in orphans as well. Just where, though? Where is he in orphans? We'll do it together, tongue tied. Daniel and I are off again. See ya. See ya, Daniel. Back into the missing group. Can't believe Charlie is in orphans. Look, my profile picture right there. It's Charlie. Of course I'm going to recognize Charlie. 100% of the time. All right, Goober. Goober said he had something for us, but I don't know what he had. I'm back again. I remember, I remembered a contact I had that could provide us with more information. She was a member of the Bearers of Light, that cult, that cult that's probably still the cult in the orphans, or in that village. It's probably all still the same. So she was a member of the Bearers of Light for a long time, but distanced herself from them a few years ago. She's been living a rather secluded life, even changed her name. A new name, why so secretive? Because she doesn't want the Bearers of Light to get her. She doesn't want that cult to get her. I, I get it. Why the uh, anonymity? If the, uh, if the Brotherhood is supposed to be so harmless, true. That's a good question for Goober, because Goober said that the that the Brotherhood is harmless. We know that the Brotherhood's not harmless, but Goober said that. So but why? Why the anonymity when the Brotherhood is supposed to be harmless? You Clearly, whoever this member is, is trying to hide from the cult. I'm surprised that didn't hurt our relationship with Goober. <laughs> well, I think she was embarrassed of being part of part of it at some point there was some kind of corruption scandal a few years back that made quite big news members of the fraternity were accused of being involved in it if i remember correctly she was the judge in that trial the sentences were apparently very lenient that caused anger among the plaintiffs and she was faced with a shitstorm on social media that's all i know i got in touch with her while I was working on my last, latest book. But like I said before, I didn't find out a lot through her. Nothing that might be of interest to my readership. So, she was just as corrupt as, as the rest. She was, she was one of the judges. She was the judge. How is that not a conflict of interest, though? She was the judge that was set, doing the sentences for this, this brotherhood. And they, they were in some huge scandal... And she gave him lenient sentences. She she gave him a little slap on the wrist. And that was enough to make her go into hiding. You know, obviously she probably got a lot of bad you know feedback on social media, but that, that caused her to change her name and everything. Maybe she did because she was so ashamed of what she did. <laughs> did she leave just to save her own face? How could she how could she be of help to us? She, then she probably won't be able to help us either. Look, she leave just to save her own face? Like she she left just to just to get the get the, the the bad looks away from her? I can't tell you for sure. Maybe, maybe she will tell you herself. Okay. Do you have her number? Since Sandy's on there. Since she's a very private person, I can't share her number. I sent her contact information instead. I don't know if she'll get back to you, but that's all I can do for you at the moment, I'm afraid. Goober's still not all that great. I mean, he kind of helped, but he's still not all that great of help. What's going on, Sandy? It's been a while since we talked to Sandy, Sandy and Jarek. We haven't talked to Leon in a long time. Tammy, she's still possessed somewhere. Tongue tied. I don't have much time. It's about Jarek. I was so happy to see him. There's something wrong with him. I, <laughs> yeah, Sandy, told you to stay away from him. There was going to be something wrong with you or him. We were just weren't sure which, but I was pretty sure 
there was going to be something wrong with Jarek. Because he was hearing things that we weren't hearing. And we were hearing things that he wasn't hearing. The things we were hearing were not good. But the things he was hearing were like super pleasant and happy. And, and he loved it. And it wasn't good. So he's definitely possessed. Or early stages of being possessed. So there's something wrong. And why is that? I've been meaning to warn you. I had that impression too. Yeah, I've, I had that impression too. I had that impression that there might be something wrong with Jarek. He was normal at first. I mean, normal under the circumstances. We talked about the situation and thought about what to do. Then he turned on the radio again. He was going to try to reach someone. Suddenly... What? <laughs> oh, it was the radio. He turned it on again. He was hearing things through the... That's right. He was hearing things through the radio. Were there, were there those voices again? Like the weird whispers and, and, and not good voices? I went to the kitchen for a minute. When I came back... I don't know. He seemed completely different. He was so angry. Called me Amelia. That's not good. Saying random stuff about a family. I couldn't understand a lot of it. I think he's really sick tongue-tied. He scares me. Look, did anyone else get goosebumps? I didn't. I'm just asking you. Like, if you did. Because I, I feel like, you know, an average person would probably feel it at this point in time. You know, when... Jarek starts calling Sandy Amelia. I didn't, but I, I don't get scared. Just figured you, you might have. You might have. You might have gotten goose pimples. Who knows? He scares me. Says Sandy, not me. I didn't say that. He, Sandy said that. Sandy says he scares me. <laughs> Sandy, you have to get out of there. The police are on, already on their way to you. Where is he now? Damn, it's like Tammy. Look, you got to get the hell out of there, Sandy. The police are coming? Oh my God, finally. But I can't leave Jarek alone now. He went down to the basement? That's not good. That's not good. We know what's down in the basement. He was going to get something? Sandy, you need to leave. It's it's too dangerous. We we know what's down in that basement. You gotta leave, Sandy. But it's Jarek. It's not Jarek anymore. He would never hurt me. You're right. Jarek wouldn't. But whatever is possessing Jarek just might. He's coming back. I have to help him somehow. Talk to you later. No. It's Sandy, hang on. Hang on. Wait. Don't leave. Sandy's dead. Alright, rip Sandy. <laughs> Ina and Samuel. Heading back to the village now, says Samuel. Jason secured the scene of the accident. He even put up some warning lights. Tomorrow, he'll have our car towed for us. Okay. What about the orphan? Like, what about the orphanage? And, 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 and Jarek and Sandy. Like, you guys need to get there now. It's one job done. Still no response from his men. Samuel. I'm very worried about... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really worried about Jarek and Sandy at this point in time. Something's not right. Why? What's the matter with them? I tried to get a hold of them earlier. Didn't have any luck. The last thing Sandy wrote to Ina sounded quite optimistic. Op optimistic. <laughs> optimistic. She said she found that house and that Jarek was in there. I uh, at least they're together. That that's the that's the thing. That's the that's the problem. Is that they're together? Because Jarek. Is not doing okay. There's something wrong with Jarek. She said Jarek was at. Look, there's, there's definitely something wrong with Jarek. 100%. Hmm. 
Not Jarek 2. Yes, Jarek 2. Don't worry. Jason was just saying that he knows the house. He'll drive by there on his way to the orphanage. Speaking of Jason, which I is why I texted you. Check out this symbol on the wall of his, inside our hotel. Oh, it's the Leviathan cross, I bet. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Does it mean anything to you? Yes. It means... <laughs> Jason has exactly the same symbol tattooed on his left. So he's definitely part of the cult. Definitely part of the cult. Look, Jason's not safe to be around anymore either. I wonder what it means. Maybe like a coat of arms of the village? I'll ask him in a minute. Just can't get a word in yet. Ina is chewing his ear off. That symbol, that's a symbol of a cult. It's a symbol of some kind of brotherhood. That's a symbol of an ancient satanic cult. Yes, I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> you mean Jason is some kind of Satanist? No way. He's totally harmless. Think again, Samuel. You're seeing ghosts everywhere, tongue-tied. It's just a symbol, right? Back at the hotel now. We'll get back to you in a minute. That's not good. It's not good. There's a huge conspiracy going on with this village. Poseidon. Oh, is this the girl? That Goober sent our contact to? Poseidon? Hello. Mr. Goober forwarded me your contact and told me about your problem. Thanks for getting in touch so quickly. Hey, I wasn't sure if you'd get back to me. Hi, I hope you can help us. Look, I wasn't sure you were going to be getting back to me. But seeing as how you are getting back to me just through, you know, hiding your, your name and stuff, I suppose you won't have any problem with answering any of my questions. Mr. Goober said that a colleague of his disappeared. Is that correct? And you suspect the Brotherhood may be involved? 100%. I don't suspect it. I know it. That's the only lead we have. Could there be a connection? We don't know. We're investigating in every direction. Look, that's the lead that we have. It's, it's the Brotherhood. It's the one and only lead that we need. I'd love to help you find your friend. But I can assure you the Brotherhood has nothing to do with his disappearance. What makes you so sure? How would you know that? It seems suspect to me, though. Look, it's super sus. Very sus. The Brotherhood, super sus. You mean that your friend disappeared while he was researching about an organization with an admittedly dark past? Believe me, the historic records have no connection whatsoever with what the Brotherhood embodies today. And why did you leave and go into hiding yourself? You seem to be afraid yourself. Is this group, uh, if this group really is so harmless, <laughs> if this group really is so harmless, then why are you hiding everything that there is to hide about you? If, if this group really is so harmless, then why did this, this person change their name when they, when they left the Brotherhood? You wonder why I'm so secretive about myself. Hundred percent. Hundred percent I wonder why. That has other personal reasons I don't want to discuss further. Whatever you say, Judge. <laughs> I don't think she knows that we know a lot. <laughs> no offense, but that's not very convincing. The records I have paint a different picture. Fonts was very scared, especially after he came across the Brotherhood. Look, the records I have paint a different picture there, Poseidon. I don't know what happened to your friend, and I'm also sorry for the situation your friends are in. But let me tell you again, the Bearers of Light have long left behind the terrible events of their past. Today... They're a very modern and emancipated organization. They've made it their goal to overcome the outdated moral concepts of ancient religions, to establish a society where everyone is responsible for their own fate and where everyone has an equal chance. 
Sounds too good to be true. Sorry, it looks a little different to me. You mean everyone who is part of this elite community? <laughs> right. But look, it looks a little different to me, for sure. Definitely looks different to me. Well, you know, somebody on the outside looking in doesn't look good. To explain all this to you in detail would go too far now. But you can be sure you're following a false lead. I doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it. I'm afraid I have to disagree still. I can't shake the feeling there's a connection. Okay, thanks for your love. I, 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 I disagree. I disagree with you 100%. I'd love to tell you more about the Brotherhood and convince you, but I had to learn that even the best advice can be used against you. That's why I just I just going I'm I'm just going to say this. Don't waste time chasing false leads. Your friends need you more more right now. If I can be of any other assistance to you, please let me know. And with that ends this part of episode two what do you think let me know in the comments what do you think is poseidon somebody that we should be trusting is the brotherhood is this bearers a light cult are they really so harmless i don't think so i i i think i think they're a huge part of as to what is going on i think they're a huge part as what happened in the in the past they're a huge part as to the the current present and they're going to be a huge part in the future of, of, of orphans, I think. And, and I think they're definitely holding fonts hostage. hundred percent. They're, they're, they're doing rituals and summons to, to, to create this, this, this dangerous orphanage where people are getting haunted and possessed and turned evil. Like they're part of it. I just, I feel it in my gut. They are sus, but let me know what you think down in the comments. I hope you're enjoying Orphans as much as I am, and I hope you're enjoying the author's chats. This is the second author's chat in episode two. And what about Charlie? Do we, do, do we, do we foresee a little bit of J.K. Knight in the future as well? There's only one way to find out, and that's by continuing with Orphans or continuing watching my playthroughs. Because we will complete the entire series of Orphans, without a doubt. And with that being said... If you enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying this game, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and join the Tethered. As always, thanks for watching. Love you all, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.